Welcome to video 9 in my Intro to HTML web video series. As you may recall, video 8 focused on the syntax of the basic table. We talked about the table element, the caption element, the t-head element, tr's, th's, t-body and t-foot and td's. I want to talk about styling the table in this video. So let's get started. We've got our basic table down here. Table opens, table closes. We've got a caption, a T head with one TR, a series of THs. We've got our T foot with a TR, a series of TDs. We've got our T body with a TR and a series of TDs. And then I've got my summary up in the opening of the table. If we look at this in the browser, looks like this, kind of a boring looking table. Nothing exciting about it. We want to style it so it looks, looks more interesting and has a better visual arrangement. So let's start out by going up to our style sheet and I'm going to select table. I want to select table because I want to style the table as a whole to start with. I want to change its font family and I want to change its background color. Start with background color. make it sky blue, save it, refresh it in the browser, and you'll notice that everything inside of the table has a background color of sky blue, except for the caption. The caption isn't really part of the table right now. It's sort of thought of separately, according to the style sheet. Now, let's change the font family of the entire table. Font family, Arial, save it, launch it in the browser. Now the entire table, including the caption, gets changed to Arial. So the way you can think of this is that caption, TR, TD, and TH all inherit the font family property from table. It's passed down to all nested elements from table. Pretty cool. Gives you a lot of power for the way you can style the table. Now if we wanted to get more specific, we could override the font family quality in any one of these, uh, in any one of these elements. I want to override it in the caption. So I'll select caption, choose font family, and I want to change it to serif. Serif is just going to give me the default serif font for the browser. In this case with uh, Chrome, it defaults to Times New Roman. So I can override that property declaration from table in one of the lower, more nested elements. All right. So I've changed the background color, changed the font family of table and caption. Now I want to style these groups of rows. I want to style the t-head, t-body, and t-foot separately. So each one of them has their own background color. I want it to look like this, that you've got a, a t-head that's silver, a t-foot that's t silver, and a t-body that's all white. So I'll get my style sheet going, t-head. I'm going to copy background color from here, paste it in here. I wanted this one to be silver for T-head. So T-head, background color silver. I'll copy this, paste it, because that's quick and easy. Change this to T-foot. So now I've styled T-foot to have a silver background color as well. And then I wanted the T-body to be white. So paste it again change my selector to t-body, change my value to white, and now I've got a, a table that has the background color of the table sky blue, the font family Arial, the caption has a font family of serif, the t-head has a silver background color, t-foot has a silver background color, and t-body has a white background color. So I'll save this, launch it in the browser, and that's what it looks like. If you look closely, 
in between the in between the cells, we've got our cells are going to be silver for my THs, white for my T or for my T body, and then for my T foot they're silver. But you can see the background color of the body showing up in between those cells. It kind of gives it the appearance of having a border without actually being a border. So go back to its original size. What are some of the other things we can do with the table? Well, we can change the table's height and width if we want to with the height property and the width property. So I could do something like this. Height, uh, 250 pixels. Let's give you a pretty big table for this data. Width. I can do percentages for width. So I could do something like 50%. And it will take up 50% of its containing element. In this case, the element that contains the table is body. So it'll take up 50% the width of the body. That's a pretty funny looking table. I might want to add some more rows into the T body just to flesh it out so it looks a little bit better. So I'll copy this. Paste it a few more times. So now I've got a, a table with one row two rows, three, four, five, six, and four of those rows are in the T body. So I'll refresh it. That looks a little bit better. So this is an example of styling a table. You can change background colors, you can change fonts, you can change the height and width. You can add borders if you choose to. I choose not to right here. Well, maybe I'll just throw in a border so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to put a border on, on table. two pixels, solid, red. And I'll talk more about this when I talk about the box model later on. Save it, refresh it, and you can see that there's a border all around the range of the table. So that's styling a table. So in summary, we've got our table. Table is made up of a caption, T head, T foot, T body. It has TRs that make up the rows. It has THs and TDs which make up the cells. When we want to style these things, we can style them as a whole using the table selector, changing the background color, font, family, height, width, border. You can style the caption separately to override what happened with the table. And then you can change the T foot, T body, T head to override what happened with the body as well.